Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Dr. Bluring's electronics caravan, uh, caravan battery charging, powering, and so on. Laboratory, laboratorium. Uh, we're, I'm taking a little bit of a break from the practical things of uh, actually building a battery and so on. The battery is currently apart. Here's a threaded rod for it. But you have, I'm, I've been painting the, the, the thing that will be the enclosure. So the, the paint is drying. It's really hot in here. It's really cold outside, like minus eight today. It's pretty damn cold for, for November. There you go. And I don't know where the order of the, where this here, these here videos will be released. They probably won't make any sense. Uh, in either case, this is, I'm thinking out loud here of where I am in this uh, process. And I'm sharing it here, uh, for better or worse. But I actually have some paperwork on the caravan now. It's now actually mine. Uh, also in the, in not only in, in that I ha have an agreement with the previous owner, uh, but I've uh, actually paid for it, and I have also actually gotten the registration papers and everything. So it's now mine according to, to the to the uh, what do you call it, the transport station, the. Department of Motor Vehicles, the DMV, or the equivalent, Transportstyrelse. So if you look up the registration number, now the, my name will come back as the owner, since since a little while back. But there you go, uh, never mind. Um, this is now about the charging of the battery uh, and such. I've, I've had a drawing of this before, I couldn't quite find it uh, right now, but it is... Uh, it be in here now with it. Uh, uh, quite nice. Uh, no, no, it isn't. But there are other things here that could be of interest. Uh, def definitely, the, the electrical schematic of the caravan. Yeah. <laughs> right. So is this actually mine? Uh, yes. Amethyst G GLE. Grand Lux uh, exclusive, maybe. I don't know what it, what it sounds for, but this is apparently the electrical schematic of how it is now. Um, see here, where is the battery? There is the battery. The battery will be uh, replaced by uh, basically one of these, a voltage regulator of some kind, or multiple of these uh, in practice. Uh, but that's that's for using power. That, that's, I'm not quite there yet. I'm, we're at the charging state now. So I'm going to have to draw out this again a little bit. Uh, we have solar panels maybe three maybe four of them for hopefully we have a happy sun shining on it and not too many clouds we say that we connect them in series and so on and we have a solar charge controller your writing is terrible mate yes i know they go into there uh, my home my home built battery battery doesn't quite look like this but uh, anyway it, it has a plus and a minus in any case so uh, what I'm thinking now that draw out a positive rail here yes oh, you have two you have drawn out two positives on this here battery yeah but this this is the real positive and this is actually negative uh, we just Imagine that we can tie that to to the chassis somehow. It might not be very feasible. I've thought about this a bit because where where can you actually access the chassis inside the caravan? Not not in a whole lot of places. I don't think because the it's wood and plastics inside the caravan. Um, there are these things that, that holds it to uh, holds the the, the caravan. <laughs> really? this part of it to the chassis bolts going into the floor and what have you where you can maybe access the chassis ground but that's not what I'm here to talk about no, I'm here to talk about these things hopefully or, or how you could use these things because um, when when charging bat the battery and so on, uh, and so I need to have a bit, little bit of voltage regulation. For simplicity's sake now here with voltages, we just say that this battery is 3.65 volts, 
it is actually 3.65 times 8 when fully charged, but we, we say that it's just one cell now for 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 keeping it a bit simpler uh, as well. So, solar charge controller will be tied in into to that. Uh, here, say like so, and solar charge controller has. Uh, I might even have a prop that as well. Uh, hold on just a minute here if I can find that quickly. Yes, I can. Here we go. Solar charge controller. This is not maybe the one that I'll use uh, because this is, it says MPBT here, yes, but that's only the name of it <laughs> because this is a PWM solar charge controller. Uh, I claimed 40 amp uh, rated, but I don't know. I only use it with one solar panel and a lead acid battery. It seems to do fine with that, but anyway, we have, we have that's the prop for that. And whatever this will be in practice, if it's not this one, it will be something akin to this one. And that has that can do sort of intelligent things that are needed to do, like charge the battery up to maximum, say 3.65 or whatever I set it to, maybe 3.6. And when it has reached that and kept the voltage for a while, it will back off a bit and float the battery. Uh, the lithium battery does not float uh, as a lead acid battery does. I am uh, aware of this. But what happens if you have the cell at a full state of charge uh, and then you drop the voltage down a bit to, I don't know what, but say 3.4 volts or something or 3. Point, yeah, 3.4, 3.3 maybe. Well, as, as the, the voltage in, in the battery cell uh, is then higher than the voltage uh, from the charge controller, then no, no current will go into the battery. So you're not actually floating the battery as such, but you are keeping voltage uh, available from your solar panels or for, from another source so that your loads, uh, as soon as you load the battery, the ba voltage will go down, down slightly. And when it goes down to such a level where, where these are waiting the charge controllers or chargers are, the the power will be drawn from there instead of the battery and the battery will charge back up and so on. All of that is, is great stuff. But I'm not quite sure how to accomplish this uh, myself. What what this thing does or what things similar to, to this does, I suppose I could use this actual thing as a, yeah, here you see, uh, we have so that's the solar part of it. And then we have another source of, uh, of power. And that may be uh, from the car, that may be from uh, an AC charger. And more props. Uh, that may be this, for example. Uh, an old server uh, power supply. 1100 watts. This one, if you can just figure out how to connect these pins together to make it turn on. Which may not be the easiest thing ever. And if you can also figure out how to disable the over voltage protection in it and also figure out how to regulate the voltage up a bit, that would be great. And if you could also insulate the DC uh, negative from ground, which is through a little screw there and maybe in other places as well, then you can actually put two of these in series and then you could get the voltage up to just about where you need it. And you'd have 2,000, 2.2 kilowatts, pretty great. However, these things will not be able to cope with that. But in any case, we have a we have a DC source of power here for of some description, which can be then from from the, an AC power supply, or it can be from the the car alternator, in some way, shape, or fashion, or form. And what I'm thinking then uh, is to have a um, two of these here, constant current, constant voltage things. Now, in practice, what I'm showing here, my props, uh, one is uh, this is a boost converter, i.e. it steps the voltage up. This is a buck converter that steps the voltage down. But uh, regardless, uh, they both have the feature of limiting both voltage and current coming out of them. I think that in general, uh, the buck converter is preferable to use. So if you can get the higher voltage than you need uh, for charging, uh, this process of stepping it down is uh, easier and more efficient, maybe slightly, than stepping it up. It would appear so because this, uh, well, well, this has stuff on the back side. This has stuff there. The idea, anyway, 
if you can get to it. Yeah, I'm still I'm not fully recovered here from whatever the hell this is that is going on man cold thing. But it's rough, it is what it is. But anyway, if you had two of these. Constant current, constant voltage things. Constant current, constant voltage. And you had one of them set to 365 times 8, and one of them set for like 3.4 or something thereabouts, so whatever we, we think that the, the floating voltage would be for the solar charge controller, you'll have this set as, as the same. Um, and then you'd have, you'd, I'd, I'm thinking of having a relay and controlling this somehow. So a relay uh, here, like so, and uh, I don't know if I need a relay for this one. This will be on. No, I don't need a relay for this one. Uh, so you'd have a relay here and you'd have some sort of device um, voltage monitor, say. So this is a very simplified charge controller. Uh, you could, could put it. Something that is monitoring uh, the voltage uh, here. It checks here what is the voltage and if it is um, below uh, 3.65 it uh, it simply closes this uh, there closes this relay and allows current to flow through the that thing and this thing uh, the 3.4 at 3.4 volts that's connected all the time um, well, I'm thinking at least it ought to work like this uh, be because you, uh, it's really difficult to get two of these. Uh, imagine that these were identical now and this was a uh, buck convert just as this one. Even if you were to set these at, uh, so that uh, your voltmeter would uh, read the same voltage out of them and try to use them in parallel for driving a load, it wouldn't quite work because they would not be uh, exactly matched and one would end up uh, carrying uh, most if not all of the load in practice but I'm not driving a, a load I'm, I'm trying to charge a battery and I'm I'm thinking that as long as the cell voltage is below 3.4 volts uh, from, from here this one ought to, to contribute um, quite a lot as well as this one uh, because when the voltage is below 3.65 say or whatever you set it to in practice I, I'd probably set it to like 3.5 or something uh, yes uh, and I'm at least I'm thinking uh, that most of the time when the battery is not fully charged or not fully depleted it will be around 3.2 volts and then it ought to work the, the current from your DC source here. They, they will, this will be tied together to, to the same DC source, whatever that may be. Uh, will they really? Maybe because you have AC coming into this uh, with a, a power supply in between. And you also have from the, from the car uh, still, uh, that's a car, sure it is. Uh, you also have something uh, DC at some voltage, which I'm not quite sure yet. But you, you ha I have a voltage regulator of some kind, uh, maybe in the car, ste to step the voltage up uh, as much as possible so as the wiring between the car and the caravan is uh, quite thin. So you want uh, a high vo as voltage as you could safely get away with. And maybe step it down again before going into this charging circuit, if you could call it that. Uh, yes, that would sort of work because these would never be connected simultaneously. And also you could have sort of a, a lockout so that the, the power supply from the AC 
drives a relay, say, that's normally closed in the position that it connects to the car, but when when the, the, that power uh, supply is, is connected, uh, is powered on, it changes that relay around, so these things, yeah, I think that's how you do it. So this actually goes to the relay here. Uh, it's starting to get a little bit... And it has two outputs, and they all do, almost all of them do. Uh, and you, it would be the other way around, right? Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm trying here. It's it's like 30 degrees in here, <laughs> so it's a bit difficult to, to think, uh, and so on. But yes, it's starting to get a little bit small. But there, coil, power supply drives that coil. Uh, Incoming power from car is connected there, and uh, it is also connected from the power supply here, like so. So it can switch in between those. But the, the core of the thing that I need to test is if this will work. So if this one, that is a set that the floating voltage will actually contribute uh, when this is also connected. And I'm, I'm guessing and hoping and thinking that it ought to and it ought to do that. I, I'm hoping for this to work. Uh, it ought to do that at a, at a decent rate too. Not only just trickle through a few milliamps, milliamperes, but actually push, push uh, more or less what you have adjusted it to here uh, with, with your adjustment screws. So, so yeah, that's where I'm at now to, to charging uh, when it comes to charging this here thing. <coughs> and. Uh, yeah, this is for later, I'm trying to figure out how to actually tie into all this stuff. But this is good, I actually have this, so you can make out most things here. Here's the AC part of it, incoming to 30 volts. That's connected to chassis ground, apparently the ground there, and you have a ground fault device thing, two breakers, um, power outlets, and it goes to the uh, the heating thing in in the, the in in the furnace, if you call it furnace, I think you call it the furnace because it's burning propane, or using um, a resistive heater powered by from the grid. Yeah, I need to refill my paracetamol and uh, ibuprofen here because I'm getting a bit dizzy now. And such, you know how it is. How it goes with this here, man comes. You know, I have like. Two, three days, which is completely fucking awful and terrible and just impossible almost to get through. Uh, <coughs> and then you suddenly get like a lot, a bit better. And it feels so much better than, than, than those worst days that you feel like, oh, I'm on the right track. I'll be back in business here any day now. Thing is just that you, every time, that takes like weeks before you're back, actually back in business. And you, every time I hope that, ah, oh, this will be a, a short one. I'll be back in in, uh, since I was really sick for, for two, three days, I have now the, the intermediate state here of maybe another two, three days uh, where I'm slightly sick, but can still get by and function uh, with the help of ibuprofen and paracetamol. Uh, but uh, that, that is not two, three days. That, that's more like two, three weeks, unfortunately. Uh, it seems to be nowadays. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's uh, this is coming up. Will be coming up maybe on the Doctor Clearing channel. Uh, trying to charge uh, the lithium battery. I need to charge it uh, in any case somehow uh, when I have it assembled and such. So this is something that I'll try then. Uh, but that's it for now. Thank you so very much for watching. Uh, cheerio.